Okay, once again, we've got um, we've got this machine tweaked to its uh, furthest extension, and uh, but it's going to work. I, you know, we've got it down to where it wants to be. Now I'll just bring the table this direction as I step through the process. We're going to do uh, uh, these two angles. And then probably we can just flip the head and do this angle, but I'm not sure. We may have to rotate this thing around and work from the back side. But as we sit, we're working right from this angle. Much better. All right, so one thing we need is some oil. Let's see how it cuts. Okay, we've cut ourselves a 45 there. Uh, it's taken about an hour and, oh my God, an hour and a half. So uh, we have to do these two inner 45s with the, with the mill bit because we can't get to it. But I think the next time I do this, I'm going to throw this up on the saw, cut that 45 off from the top, and, uh, and at least you know cut out some of the time it took to do this. So I want to take just one last, um, one last pull across this just because it... Uh, it's chattering just a little bit, and I want to kind of do a nice clean finish. So we're going to take it back. We're going to add, oh, just a few thousands, maybe 10. Let's see what we can come up with now. All right, let's see what that looks like. Uh, it's much better, much better. We still got a little bit of chatter in there, but I think I can live with that. So now we lift this up, index it down. Oh, first we got to take this bit out. This is uh, my finishing bit. It's brand new and sharp as a tack. Um, so we're not going to use that to hog out this, all of this metal. Let's uh, go ahead and take that out. All right, drop this down. We're going to need to move you a little bit because we're going to come out of ways. Now the problem is, is that our clamps on this side are going to hit. So what I have to do is bring the clamps over to this side and reconnect them. And that shouldn't be too difficult. First thing we got to do is clean up this mess though. Okay, we got our clamps reset and I don't know if you can see that little line right there. That's where we want to go to. We're going to trim that back so that later on we can get in and come in and and clean out this in interior area here. Good morning, Nick Collier here again, and it's a bit cold, but uh, hey, it's winter. 
we flipped this head or back around. It was uh, yesterday it was pointing at that angle at 45 degrees. Now we flipped it over at this angle at 45 degrees. And we're going to take this little triangle out here. Uh, yesterday it took us about an hour to do that one. So, uh, and I think I have Patty coming in today to help me out. So uh, she'll be uh, cranking this thing back and forth by hand. And I, I promised myself to get a power feed for the Y direction uh, as soon as possible. Of course, it'll probably be too late for this project, but it'll be there for future projects. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take that out. And then also at the same time, while Patty's doing this, I'm going to go over to the lathe and we're going to do a little bit of lathe work, maybe uh, some threading. Uh, we'll check it out. So, uh, hey, let's have some fun. Okay, it turns out that uh, these two rams are going to go inside of that big block of steel that we're cutting down uh, at, once I get the holes drilled out or bored out because it's going to go out to this size here. And uh, once we get that uh, to get taken care of, the, the, these rams will slide up inside of that sleeve and sit on a, on a uh, seat exposing about, oh, I may be this much threads. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with this sleeve here and cut a, probably just cut this in half and go ahead and measure and bore and uh, thread the inside of this and then uh, and then I'll be able to, and then I also want to come in and do some kind of flat or something to allow a wrench to be put on that and then of course probably I'm gonna have to build a wrench because it's an awful big piece and sure as hell I'll know that uh, if they start wrenching on this with pipe wrenches, it's going to just chew it up fairly quickly. So, um, but for the moment, we're going to cut this in half. We're going to th we're going to thread it first, then cut it in half, and then prepare it to be the two nuts that are going to hold the rams in place uh, on the uh, on the uh, the block of steel. So let's go over to the lathe and uh, dink around over there. Well, silly me, uh, I can't do anything until I know what this thread size is. And somebody painted the threads. I don't get that, but they did. And uh, so, and it, it looks like it's just like a barely a surface coat of paint. So I think I'm going to just kind of wing it from there and hope to uh, get my measurements. Let's come in. Looks like we got it right on the money. Let's see what size we came up with. 12 threads per inch. Yep. And that looks like it's just about perfect. Let's see if we can get some of that paint out. Make sure. Yep, I think that's going to do it. 12, 12 threads per inch. And uh, okay, while well, Patty's over there cranking on the uh, on the bridge port, we are over here uh, doing uh, a little bit of lathe work. We're going to spin you around here and show you what we're up to. The uh, I tried to get this to clear so I could run a thread all the way through, but it doesn't look like I can do that because my uh, my uh, lathe uh, I can't remember the name of them uh, fingers uh, hit on the inside of the bore. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take two of these, bore them out, come back in thread both of them and then cut off the back side of it so that's you know not that big a deal but uh, you know it is um, more effort so right now we need to take our bore out to 3180 all right we're not needing to go all the way through so I went down to about here and what I want to do now, and I don't know if you can see it or not, we're going to come down a little bit, there we go, is I'm going to slide my, uh, my carriage stop over, and I'll know 
that that's where my uh, that's where I need to go to. Okay, we're going to come in and take a measurement here and uh, see how close we are. Okay, we got our major diameter cut and now we're going to come in and cut our... our Nope, we have our minor diameter to cut. Now we're going to come in and cut our major diameter. Now, I've already done it on the other piece, so my DRO is all set up to uh, to uh, calculate that. And all we have to do is take it back down to zero. And what I'm doing is just creating a step here so that I know where the thread is going to be. And I don't have to watch it too much. And then, of course, once I go into that step, we, uh, I can go all the way back into the back side of this and do the same thing. Except I'm going to need to move you in order to be able to see in there. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you in a minute. All right, so now we're going to set up our square up our bit in the in the uh, to the work face, and we'll come in. And I like to square it up to the outside edge and then get a flashlight and kind of look and see what I've got. Well, two things happened yesterday while we were just kind of hanging around doing other things. And that is, is that Patty came in and squared up this just a horribly unsquare piece of steel. She got that baby all squared up for me. And uh, you can see that uh, all edges are ready to go. I think she's got one more edge right here to do. But uh, we'll get that done and uh, it'll be ready to go. But for right now, we need to drill two holes in this sucker uh, because this is going to be my counterweight. Oh, let's let's go off to another thing because yesterday afternoon, uh, you know, after fighting with this thing, with the cross feed on this, the Y direction, um, I I just finally just said, okay, that's it. I'm going to order uh, the proper tool for this. So we're going to spin around and 
come down here and this morning what I'm going to be doing is installing a power drive for my Y uh, direction. And uh, it's about three quarters uh, installed at the moment. And that way we can uh, just crank it a power, uh, automatically without, uh, you know, sitting here grinding away at it. Um, so uh, we'll be playing with that a little bit first thing this morning. And then we're going to come over and uh, put two holes in this, in this, uh, this piece here. So, no, okay, I'm going to take you over and show you this. Okay, we've got this heavy-duty-ass piece of steel sitting here. Now, we're going to have to throw it up on the lathe and bore out these holes here so the rams can fit through the center of this. Now, the only way I can figure to bore that out is to put it on the, uh, and, you know, I'll have to take the, uh, the um, gaps out on the lathe and then put the 24-inch uh, faceplate on there and then slide this and center it on the faceplate. Of course, we've got, you know, this totally out of balance situation going. In fact, I have this sitting on a pivot and you can see this thing's just gonna go out of balance like nobody's business. So that's where that other piece of steel comes in. We're gonna bring that other piece of steel and we're gonna set this over that way. And then we're gonna bring that other piece of steel in and drop it in someplace right along in here to give it more balance. And then put this whole thing up on the lathe and uh, turn these two holes. So that probably isn't gonna happen today, but uh, we're working toward that. Okay, so what we need to do is just kind of lay this out and see where we're gonna be here. So I'm gonna just take half of this and we're sitting at about 12 inches. So let's take it back to six. There's six. On the money. We'll scribe that. And then we need to make room for our slider blocks which are going to sit, oh, probably something like this. Let's see where we're at. I would say someplace right in there. So that's going to be one area. Well, I think we're going to need some DICOM on this. Okay, so we've got this sitting on its side, and it turns out that we've got some pretty heavy-duty burrs in there. So we're going to go in and deburr this guy. And it looks like my deburring tool is just the right size. Okay, good. Let's flip it around. Now there's the problem. Somehow the drill bit didn't go all the way through. If I 
fact, it's way short of going all the way through. So, um, what are we going to do? Yeah, I remember it was sitting on the, uh, on the table itself, and I didn't want to puncture the table. So, uh, well, we could take the drill and just run it through there and, and clean it out. Let's do that. I'll be back. Okay, so we took the, uh, the um, block uh, and put it on the mill and upside down and drilled out those two holes. Now, what I did forget to do was to um, countersink those holes, but I think, uh, I think I'm going to be okay. So what I want to do right here is I'm going to come in here and just center my holes on the lines that I drew a moment ago. Just kind of eyeball center them and then get it centered from side to side. Let's see what we can do with that. So what do we got here? Uh, 9 sixteenths and five eighths. So we want to come this way just a tad. Might just be able. And there we go. Okay. So now we come back down and center ourselves out on those lines. And that looks, that one looks pretty close. And that one looks pretty good, a little bit more maybe. That might be a bit too much, but let's just see how, how we do measurement wise here. We've got inch and a quarter plus a little bit and an inch and a quarter minus a little bit. So let's, uh, I'm gonna get the leather hammer. On the money. Let's check for squareness again. That looks good. That looks good. One more check. Make sure we haven't moved off our line here. And we're doing just under an inch and five eighths. And just under an inch and five eighths. We can move that way just a little bit. Nope, the other way, just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Check this once more. That's about as close as you can get eyeball wise. We're on the line, and we're on the line. Okay, so now I've got a problem. The problem is, is once I drop this down in there, it's going to be uh, pretty hard to get it back out. So, but I'm not sure of any other way of doing it. I mean, it is going to slide fairly easily, so that's not going to be too bad. Maybe we can get a magnet. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, so we're right in the center. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop it. Yes. Let's bring it back. And do the same over here. Oops. 
Yes. All right, so now what we've done is we've totally located these, the centers of this to, to our uh, bottom block, or in a sense, our top block, because the whole thing's gonna be turned upside down. So let's go ahead and take this out. Take this block off. And our center line should be someplace right in here. We may have to get my glasses for it. There's our punch mark. Now let's really drive that home so we know where it's at for sure. And there's our second one. Ouch. <laughs> Okay, it's a beautiful thing. I'm going to go in and put an X to mark the spot, just so I know where it's at. So we could probably go ahead and put a center punch right here just so we know where center is. A little bit off. There we go. Perfect. Put a circle around it. And we're set to go. Now, uh, we drill these two holes out to the size of the bolt. And basically, we're going to start with a piece of hex stock like this. And we're going to turn a bolt head. We're going to leave a bolt head. And we're going to turn a piece down to go through this and attached to the ram of the, um, of the hydraulics. <laughs> 